Hello, my name is Lars-Erik Ranheden and I'm the developer behind Particle Playground, which is a unit extension for controlling the shuriken particles in a couple of new ways. You'll find the Playground framework on the Unity Asset Store, in the Editor Extensions Effects category, and once it is imported into your project, you'll find the Playground Wizard by the window menu Particle Playground. And this window contains a couple of good-to-have shortcuts. You'll also find some pre-installed presets, uh, which shows what the framework is capable of doing. You can create your own presets uh, by the preset wizard, and you can also export your uh, presets um, using the publish section here. And what this does is that it strips out any editor uh, scripts which isn't allowed uh, to tag along the Unity package you create. And you'll also find the Playground Manager here which we'll cover in a bit. And you'll also find some settings to fine-tune your experience in the Playground. Uh, for instance, you can change language, you can create and install new ones, you can edit those and export. You'll also find some editor limits here, uh, and these uh, constrain the uh, inspector values for the particle systems. You'll also find some uh, paths here, so uh, should you want to have another folder location of Particle Playground in your uh, project, that can be edited right here. And this window can be docked to anywhere inside the unit editor. So to get started we need a playground manager inside our scene. And this is the object running all particle systems. And there should uh, always only be one of this object inside your scene. In its inspector you'll uh, see that it will contain a list of your particle systems. Obviously we don't have any yet. Uh, you could create new ones from here as well. It will also contain a list of the global manipulators and they can affect particle systems within specified layer uh, where uh, you can change particle properties uh, based on their world position. You'll also find some advanced settings and good to know here is that the uh, playground framework is living on top of the shuriken component and that is hidden by default so uh, should you, for instance, want to have um, texture atlas animation on your particles, you need to enable the sh uh, shuriken component uh, visibility here uh, to be able to edit that. You'll also find some uh, multi-threading options here for the threading aggregation, um, which is good to know if you uh, need to uh, tweak the performance for your uh, end target platform. Let's create a new Particle Playground system and as you can see it has automatically been parented to the Playground Manager and this isn't necessary at all, you can have any type of hierarchy you want on your Particle systems. Uh, should you not want this behavior you can disable that on the Playground Manager, Advanced and uh, Disable Group automatically here. And should you not have a Playground Manager when you instantiate a Particle Playground system one will be created automatically. So let's have a look at the different sources. At the very top of the Particle System Inspector you'll find the Source tab. And a source is a way of describing how particle birth positions are created. Uh, right now they are created from a transform which is the Particle Playground System itself. And the points here illustrates how many birth positions are created. And right now it is uh, only one. And there are a couple of ways of creating these birth positions. You could use a state, which lets you create birth positions from either an image or a mesh. Uh, using an image, uh, you uh, will create birth positions from uh, the uh, uh, pixels within the texture chosen. And using a mesh, you'll create birth positions from the vertices within the mesh. And you can also assign a transform here uh, and uh, move that effect uh, around freely uh, and it will follow rotation and scale. You can also use a world object which lets you create birth positions from a live mesh within the scene. 
this could also be procedural. You could also use a skin world object which lets you create uh, birth positions from an animated skinned mesh. And you could use script mode to script your own emission. And you can use the paint mode to paint live into the scene using either a single point or your own brushes. And you can use projection to project a live texture into the scene where uh, it will bounce on any 3D or 2D colliders. Let's have a look at the particle settings. And I'll try to cover the most common settings first. Uh, here you'll find uh, particle count for instance, where you can set the amount of particles that should be simulated within the system, where every particle is uh, structured in uh, built-in arrays to remain efficient. You also find emission control here, uh, if the particle system should emit or not, and if that effect should loop over the specified lifetime. You also find size controls where you can specify minimum to maximum size and the size over lifetime which is specified by a normalized animation curve where um, one on the x-axis means full lifetime. And you can also scale the overall size effect. You'll also find initial rotation and rotation over lifetime and the lifetime itself. Uh, which can be set to random between two va values as well. And you'll also find the lifetime sorting and what this does is that it will determine how particle birth time uh, is distributed over the specified lifetime. Right now it's, it is set to scrambled which means it will be completely random within the uh, lifetime. Setting this to burst will make the particles uh, have the same uh, starting point in their uh, uh, birth time. And these settings will make more sense once we start to fiddle with the other controls here, such as the overflow offset. And what the overflow offset does is that it overflows the uh, uh, created birth positions from the source. And right now it is uh, creating one birth position from the particle playground system itself. And should we overflow offset this by the x-axis, let's say 0.1 units, you'll see that it starts to create birth positions from uh, the transform itself over the x-axis uh, by 0.1 units each step. And uh, the overflow mode uh, deter determines uh, the direction for, for this overflow. Right now it is set to source transform, which means that if we rotate this, we'll get um, the rotation taken into account. Uh, we could use world space, which means we don't get rotation by the transform. And we can use source point, which means that it will take the normals into into account. So if you would have a uh, source created by a mesh for instance, uh, it will use the normals to specify the uh, overflow of set direction. Now should we change the lifetime sorting to something else than scrambled? To for instance linear, you'll see that uh, it will start to distribute particles linearly over the overflow of set specified. Um, you also have a mode called nearest neighbor where you can specify the uh, origin of the, the uh, uh, lifetime sorting. And this could also be reversed as well. And you have something called particle mask here which can mask particles uh, the simulation will keep on going behind the mask and you can also f do any fades using mask time here.
Let's have a quick look at the forces tab and in here you'll find things like delta movement which can make uh, particles get an initial force by the movement of its source. Uh, you also find lifetime velocity which additively adds velocity over a particle's lifetime using x, y and z animation curves. You also find initial velocity uh, applied by minimum to maximum vector 3 values. The same thing goes for initial local velocity uh, but that takes the uh, source rotation into account. You can also mold the initial velocity shape by uh, normalized x, y and z animation curves where uh, one on the x-axis of these curves means the full array of uh, the particles inside the particle system. You also find a velocity bending which can bend the velocity over a particle's lifetime. And uh, you also find uh, simplex and Perlin uh, turbulence noise. Uh, you also find gravity damping uh, the overall velocity scale and uh, the maximum velocity possible for uh, the particles. At the very top you'll see something called force annihilation. And in there you'll find tools to uh, or which will annihilate any forces on your particles. Uh, only source positions will make the particles stick onto their um, birth positions over uh, their entire lifetime. And lifetime positioning will make particles move by X, Y and Z animation curves over uh, their lifetime. And you can also set up uh, any constraints over the X, Y and Z axis. Having a look at the collision tab, you'll see that you can do collisions with uh, 3D and 2D objects. You can mask out any object by the collision mask. Uh, you can collide with rigid bodies and by the mass uh, determine how much the rigid body will be affected. Uh, you can set the collision radius of the particles uh, and the lifetime loss once they collide. You can also set the bounciness of the particles and the random bounce with the uh, collision surface normal taken into account. And if you'd like you can create uh, infinite collision planes uh, set up by uh, transforms in the scene. In the rendering tab you'll find different uh, ways to alter the visual behavior of the particles where you can set their material. Uh, you could set how they get their uh, color information. Right now it, it is set to source which means that the um, particles will get the color information from uh, the source texture or the painted information. Uh, if you wouldn't have that, uh, for instance having your source set to transform, it will fall back to the lifetime color. Should you, on the other hand, have uh, color information inside your source, you could apply the lifetime uh, color alpha as well. Um, setting the color source to lifetime color, you can bypass any source uh, color information. And by setting to lifetime colors, you can have several lifetime gradients uh, applying colors uh, to your particles. And the render mode is directly connected to the shuriken component where you have uh, billboarding, stretched uh, horizontal billboard, vertical billboard and mesh rendering. And the sorting layer determines the order of uh, your particles visually in world space if you have a 2D environment. And that pretty much sums up the Getting Started guide, where we'll cover manipulators, events and snapshots in other videos. Thanks a lot for watching, bye!